I'm Sarah Bramwell, the editor of fundoffrater.com. I'm here with Sally Bridgeland, chair and non-executive director of the Local Pensions Partnership Investment. Sally is speaking at our ESG Investment Leader Europe Forum later this year, and ahead of that, we wanted to catch up with her to get a little bit of a flavour of what she's going to be talking about. Hi, Sally. Hello. So my first question is, as we move beyond E and, and more and more people are starting to examine the kind of S in ESG, what, what challenges loom large for institutional investors? Well, I think one of the one of the issues is the more that you introduce into the things that you care about, um, the more things you have to avoid and the more things that you have to think about and the things that are good. So, for example, if you're investing in renewable energy and solar energy because you think that's a good thing to be doing um, from the E point of view, then actually if you then take into account that most solar panels are made in, in China and you start thinking about working conditions, then actually it may not score quite so highly on the S perspective. So it's, it's kind of having to make those trade-offs and judgments and decide which, which trumps which, which not in the US president's sense, but in the, uh, which is most important to you uh, and optimizing that kind of what's the, what's the threshold it just becomes more complicated. Of course. And, you know, more and more of us are kind of looking at, at how we can make impact with our investments. How do you think that the, the so-called spectrum of capital can help with this? Yeah, I think the spectrum of capital is, um, which ranges from just thinking about risks and returns through to philanthropy. Uh, sort of goes along the scale of let's avoid doing the bad stuff. Let's do things that are generally beneficial to the market. Uh, then let's start contributing towards particular areas. That's the, that's the idea behind the spectrum of capital. And when you're thinking about social impact, a lot of that is done in the philanthropic space. So things that we're valuing and prizing for social impact may not have the financial returns. So finding a way to actually blend those and think about them differently is actually going to be very important in the future. Uh, and it's a bit more like um, uh, the autistic spectrum uh, in that actually it isn't a spectrum of more autistic to less autistic. It's, it's that there are different characteristics of people who are in the spectrum that have different strengths and different weaknesses and different challenges in their, in their lives. The same is true with investments. The reality is, is the more dimensions that you're looking at, uh, the more that you're having to think of them as individuals rather than just positioning them uh, from one end of the scale to the next. Got it. So we're seeing that more private companies are doing more for society generally and for charity as part of their kind of CSR activities how what kind of how does that play into all of this ESG investment sort of space yeah I mean it, it it's interesting because um, there are different ways that companies can have more of a social impact some of it is in their own trade practices uh, whether they're uh, uh, through things like modern slavery through diversity and inclusion through thinking about how they uh, they have an impact on societies in developing company, countries that they're, uh, that they're dealing with um, through thinking about products, um, the products that they're making and how equal it is for their customers. Um, that's how they can do have a social impact through their business activities. But yes, they can also give an awful lot of money to charity. So the question is, is how do you think differently about companies who are contributing to society in different ways, uh, what value judgments and how do you think about them on the spectrum? Because of uh, the, uh, the helicopter view right at the top, they might have the same overall financial returns and, and impact, but actually how they're doing it increasingly will matter. Uh, and I think it's, it's similar to the kinds of debates that we're having around uh, what is greenwashing and what's the real thing. Uh, is just avoiding doing the bad stuff enough or do you need to be deliberately searching for doing the good stuff as well uh, and, and finding that as well. But as an individual investor, 
would I rather put some of my money into a charity myself uh, for the causes that I really believe in and then invest in the kind of companies who are also thinking about their business in a socially responsible way, then I think that's that's where I'm happier. It, it feels it feels like step one, we're starting to do something by giving more money to charity, but actually thinking about our impact on society is where I hope um, the putting the S in the ESG will encourage companies to move over the next five, 10 years. Great, thank you. Last one from me. Um, how can we foster innovation? And, and you know, you've talked about social impact a lot. How specifically could we foster innovation to create social impact? Yeah, I, I think there's. We're seeing certainly in um, in the e part of the debate at the moment that almost everybody's looking at somebody else to be looking for the the solutions. Um, and the sort of active management, the specialists in this area are still relatively rare. It's more a question of avoiding doing the bad stuff than deliberately doing the good stuff. Um, to me, there have to be more partnerships between those that are in the different sectors across private capital, across public uh, financing and philanthropic activity. Uh, the best example to that uh, for me is in the old age care sector, which is clearly unsustainable. It's probably a business model and a, a living model that we, a lot of us, especially those of us who are developing grey hairs or have got parents in, in that kind of age group, are thinking, well, do we really want, do we really need to live our lives like this? And is it sustainable? The only way through some of these um, so problems uh, is by a different kind of cooperation between the, the private sector and the, the public and the charitable sector. Um, but it's interesting how, how pension funds, given that they have the needs of their beneficiaries to take into account, uh, and insurance companies who've got a customer base uh, in, the, in the retired or the, uh, the nearly retired sector, if they're thinking of having a customer centric approach, then it's clear that uh, they will be having an eye towards um, those kinds of sectors. So the more that companies actually get connected with the needs of their customers and the needs of society that they're involved in, mm -hmm. uh, if, they're, if they're orienting their business in that direction, you would hope it would, it would deliberately foster innovation in those areas too. Lovely, thank you. I thought that was all really interesting. I can't wait to hear more about all of this from you at our conference later this year and then to see how that thinking developed kind of over the next few months. Thank you. Thanks very much.